Birmingham, Alabama was once the most segregated city in the United States. Racial tension had been brewing for years. What added to the problem, the federal government forced communities to segregate their all-white schools. The film Woodlawn tells the story of what happened during that time and how the school racially divided football team was asked to unite. Tony Nathan would be the spark the team needed to unite the school and the community. In 1971, Tony Nathan was a rising star. He was a freshman when he and other students were bused from the across town segregation to Woodland. I draw the line in the dust and I say segregation now, segregation tomorrow, and segregation forever. You are kind of like, you kind of know what they think about you because you of the color of your skin, just because you're different. Tony grew up with Christian values and was taught to treat everyone equally. My parents taught me not to, you know, not judge the book by the cover, to give everybody the time of day, respect them. I mean, to get respect, you got to really got to earn it. Those values were put to the test when Tony tried out for Woodlawn's football team under new head coach, Tandy Geralds. From the first day of summer football practice, tension began brewing between white and black players. They noticed the ability that you had going in. And eventually, if you was playing the same position, you was going to take the. I was, gonna, I was looking to take the spot, to tell you the truth. I was looking to play. All right, guys, so the school uh, said it was cool for me to film a little bit. And so here's the school that uh, Tony Nathan actually went to, uh, known as Touchdown Tony. Um, there's an amazing scene in the movie where he, uh, his dad was dropping him off. And this is the curve right here where his dad dropped him off at in the movie. It's actually a pretty cool scene. Um, Some of the players tried to get under Tony's skin. What type of things were said? N-word. Uh, he was called black this, black that, coon. Daily? Yeah. The team wasn't very good Tony's freshman year, but his sophomore season, he had earned a starting job at free safety. The player whose position he took was white and confronted Tony, claiming it was his spot. And it was then that Coach Geralds made it clear where he stood. He said, you know, no, this is not uh, what you got. This is my team. I do what I want to do, so go sit down. The next season, Tony was moved to running back, where he really began to shine. And by then, Coach Geralds was having some success getting players to tolerate their teammates. The way Coach Geralds was, you know, okay, we hate one another, true enough. Use that hatred for something good, to go out and win football games. However, there were many who didn't want change. In the movie, that's when Hank Irwin, played by Sean Astin, approached Coach Geralds and asked for permission to address the team during summer practice. But it was actually this man, local evangelist Wales Goble, who did the talking. The real Hank was working with him. That whole experience about him dressing the team, what actually happened? He told us about Christ and that there was a plan in the making of, for us. And it was like, how are you going to confess us? How do you know? You know, and then all of a sudden, he just said, look, you know, the plan is that you make the commitment to him. He'll make a commitment to you. One of the white players was the first to accept Christ and the challenge of commitment. Tony was the second. Today, we're going to take a journey to Woodlawn and revisit the past just a little bit by a guy by the name of Touchdown Tony. Touchdown Tony during a very racist time period united the city with faith, by faith. It was absolutely amazing. Um, he was a great football player, um, highly recruited even by Paul Bear Bryant of Alabama. Um, but yeah, let's go revisit his high school and um, see how Woodlawn is doing today and versus what Woodlawn was in the 70s. I expect you to control your school, son. So you think closing Woodlawn is going to stop the violence? If there is one more incident, you're done. 
How many black players you got? Not nearly enough. So why do you see that changing? Because it's time. There's something special about you, Tony. I can see it. But you have to decide what you want to do with it. I play for a team that doesn't even want me. <laughs> or anybody like me. In the shower room, we're done, Superman. I'd like to have a meeting with your football team. I've seen some things. Well, you and I can see them here. Do something about this. It's not my fault, Owen. I'm trying to coach football. Well, this is bigger than football. What would you say if I told you it doesn't have to be this way? I'm asking you to stand up right now and make a decision to change, to forgive, to be forgiven. That's how much God loves you. What just happened? You know the difference between you and these people? They're cowards. And you ain't. All these people come to see us. What's so special about us? Give them hope. Nobody out there knows what's happened with this team. But when you win on this day, they will! What do you want to say to all of these people? You say it when you run, Tony. You say it when you run. This is your moment. This is your time. Sir. So you go and take it. You go and take it. This is what happens when God shows up. Then practically the entire team, one by one, went down to accept Christ into their hearts. At the next practice, Tony says he could feel the difference amongst his teammates in the locker room. Once everybody got, you know, made the commitment, it was like there was no color. Things just changed. You were the person. Hank Irwin became the school's sports chaplain, and he convinced Tony that he was playing for a greater purpose. I get chills not even thinking about some of the conversations I used to have with Hank. He said, well, do you plan for God? There's a higher calling that you plan for. Give it all to him, and he'll bless you tenfold. Things start to happening. We start winning. As the players united in faith and purpose, the school and the community began to come together in unity to support the team. Tony's senior year, they ended the season 9-1, losing to their rival Banks High School for a playoff berth in a game deemed the greatest game in Alabama high school football history with over 42,000 spectators. Fine game, son. Brave of you to play it. Yeah, I'm standing outside of Legion Field, and listen, I can still feel the energy in this place. You can still feel the energy. <sighs> Touchdown, Tony. <laughs> and the miracle that took place in Legion Field that day was special. Shortly after, Tony was recruited by legendary coach Paul Bear Bryant to play for the University of Alabama. After four years and the 1978 National Championship, Tony was selected by the Miami Dolphins in the 1979 NFL Draft. In nine seasons with the Dolphins, he helped them reach two Super Bowls. He recently released a book entitled, Touchdown Tony, Running with a Purpose, where he tells his story with even greater insight. He hopes readers will understand the importance of faith in sports and the influence one can have through a relationship with Jesus Christ. If you believe in the game plan that somebody gives you to execute. Having faith in Jesus Christ is the same. It's a game plan. His game plan. You just got to have faith and walk with it. I love how Jesus is the one, is the center of bringing people together. Jesus. Um, and the story is... Uh, is an amazing story. The movie is out. If you guys want to go see it, it's called Woodlawn. Um, it's a great, great movie of inspiration, a great movie about overcoming and the journey of how Jesus united a city during a very racist time period. And it explains the life of Tony Nathan. Touchdown, Tony.